Joe Miller, um, thank you for coming today. Um, I just wanted to know who is Joe Miller? Tell me about Joe Miller. What got you into politics? Well, I'm 25, so I'm quite young to get involved in politics, but I was brought up um, in a council house in Woodingdean with my mum and saw my dad at the weekends. Um, I then went to, and that was in Woodingdean, which is in the constituency, I went to primary school in Rottingdean, Our Lady of Lords, and then went on to Cardinal Newman in Hove. Um, what got me involved in politics was um, seeing some family difficulties, I suppose, over time, that actually as a result of the financial crisis, people become, um, you know, the, the, the welfare state should be a trampoline, not necessarily a net. And as a result of a number of things, my mum lost her house and we ended up in emergency accommodation. Um, and I never wanted to feel that vulnerable again. So, and I wanted to help other people that wouldn't hopefully have to feel that vulnerable again. So I went on um, and did very well at university and in my A-levels and worked hard. And, and hopefully you now my work hard, my hard work is going to pay off and I can help other people and put something back into society. Right, so what drew you to the Conservative Party? Because in Brighton it's an interesting choice to, um, to join the Conservatives. So what drew you specifically to this party? So the things that drew me to the Conservative Party were that over the sort of financial mismanagement of um, 2008, actually, it's the poorest it hurt the most by economic mismanagement, and I felt that in my own family, and I didn't want that to happen again. And under the Conservatives, over time, my family and people around me have done a lot better. They got to keep more of what they wanted to, what they earned, and, and you know, the harder they worked, the more they got out of society, and they had asp I had aspirations, and they were the party that that was enabling me to fulfil those aspirations. So that's ultimately why I'm a Conservative. I believe in equality of opportunity. So no matter where you come from, it's important that you can reach the full potential in your full potential in life. Yeah, so what are you doing at the moment? What are you trying to push through? What are you finding a struggle? So I, th I think people of Brighton, Kemp Town and Peace Havens, it does include Peace Haven well, actually want a strong voice in government for them. Right. Um, I think we've lacked that for too long in that, um, you know, people really have been out canvassing, people care about their bins being emptied on time, they care about their grass verges or, yeah. you know, small things in life. And I think MPs should be there to apply pressure to local councils, get more money from government to solve some of those problems which have existed for far too long in our, yeah. Yeah. In our area, yeah. having grown up um, here and have links to all of the constituency. Mm. I, I think people were really sort of crying out for a strong voice um, for them. I mean, there are a yeah. number of policy areas. I think, you know, the, the NHS is a, is a key one. I was airlifted to hospital when I was 14 after fracturing my skull. Um, and right. and okay. so, so funding, you know, I think funding for the NHS, and I think people should accept that, whether, you know, those on the left will always say, oh, it needs to be more, it needs to be more, it needs to be more. But you do have to be careful about the economy because if you don't look after the economy, you won't have the money to spend on the public services. You can borrow it, but you can only borrow it for so long that someone will lend it to you. Right. And okay. then you'll increase, you know, increase the interest rates, which means you're spending more on debt interest than yeah. we were on education, for example. Right, OK. So, you're, so, I mean, that is touching on policy, I guess. Yeah. So, so I mean, specifically the NHS, for instance, mm. um, the, the row that was going on in the House of Commons the other day with uh, Corbyn and uh, Boris, mm. um, promising, Boris Johnson promising not to uh, privatise the NHS. Yeah. Have you got anything to say about that? Have you any information about that at all? Is it just a political stunt? Um, well, no, it's the truth. It is the truth. Because of 70 years of, conserv of 70 years of the NHS being in existence, 44 of those years have been rung by Conservatives. Did you see Margaret Thatcher privatise the NHS? Did you see John Major privatise the NHS? No. Did you see T Cap David Cameron privatise the NHS? Have you seen Theresa May privatise the NHS? Have you seen Boris Johnson do it? No, you haven't. The only people that did start introducing privatisation was Tony Blair. The only person that did start it introducing charges were... Gordon Brown and prescriptions. Um, so, 
so I find it kind of ironic that again it's this this tarring, and I don't think we um, we argue against that enough. I, we're all uni users of the NHS. We're all born in it. We're all like to die in it. So the Conservatives are fully behind the NHS, giving it more money, but a sensible amount of money. There are efficiencies to be had. For example, you know, we individual trusts buying a certain product at different rates is just ridiculous. You know, you've got some trusts buying paracetamol at eight pounds for a pack, and some buying it at fifty beer pack. There, you know. Spreading good practice does mean that you can spend more on the frontline staff. So I, I don't accept um, the sort of the the, yeah. the 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 left and the Labour Party are very good at saying the same thing over and over again. I just invite people to actually look at the facts um, and see what's happened over the seventy-year history of the NHS. Interesting. Well, we will see, won't we? We so. will. Yeah. <laughs> um, American politics. Does that interest you at all? What's Not really. America. It doesn't. No, it's but I mean, it's interesting in that, you know... Not, uh, not to go too specific uh, on that. Yeah, well, I don't agree with what a lot of what Trump says. Right, OK. Um, I was hoping that... Should we go there with Trump? Um, Any opinions? Anything to say? Well, I think, I think the, the <laughs> office of the President of the United States is very important right. as an ally um, uh, going forward into... That is quite important, isn't it? It is a quite a strate strategically Seems important. <laughs> does tend to get lost every once in a while, doesn't it? Mm. That, uh, that's, why we, uh, that's why we sort of uh, we're friends with the states. Yeah, I think we have got this special relationship where we have a security link and ultimately, you know, I think security is extremely right. important. Right, right. Obviously, countries do make mistakes in in decision making. Politicians make mistakes. I don't think we acknowledge that enough. Not every human... Um, Every human makes mistakes and has to learn from them, no matter what level of office you're in or what job you're in. So I think we need to accept that sometimes. Right. Um, we are only human, okay. and we're trying our best. So is a it, it, is a human better than a politician to run a country? Do you think? Well, politicians are human by their very uh, nature. Okay. Now, what I'm, I'll rephrase that: uh, um, uh, is a businessman a better man to run a country? Than no, a not necessarily. Right. Okay. It's an interesting one. No, no, no. Um, just on the on the various issues, you know, I'm, I'm NHS schools policing are key issues. Yeah. Housing, I'd want to get more, be able to get more. So what's the situation with housing? Because it seems like it's a stalemate, and a, a how would you break that? How, yeah, you know, what well, would we you need do to, to, to sort of break the cycle of what's going on? Is it, well, we need to build more. Impossible? No, nothing's impossible if you put your mind to it. So how would you do it? So you need to build more housing, which we're doing. Yeah. You need to... Um, which we are doing, tax foreign investment into property a lot higher to disincentivise that. Mm -hmm. And likewise with sort of people building up huge buy-to-let portfolios, which right. we're doing, uh, stamp duty mm -hmm. and um, capital gains tax, etc. Um, so there's the, you can use that as a, as, a, as a stick. Then you need carrots, obviously, which is building more houses, giving me pe young people the opportunity to buy it through saving up deposit schemes, but also you could start looking at generally mortgage lenders lend between four and five years of your earnings. You could increase that to make um, to make it more um, ascertainable for people to be able to get a mortgage and then buy their first house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as that goes on, you then would see more people buying it. You'd see less people renting it, which would then um, create a more um, home ownership led. And if people got a stake in society, they feel something. I think that's why we're seeing more division in our country. Right. Currently, um, so there's a number of, of ways and means that you can get people onto the private sector of private sector housing, um, yeah, and yeah. there's obviously the need for more affordable housing for those who can't afford it through housing associations, councils. We've lifted the HRA borrowing cap, which housing revenue account borrowing cap for councils to enable them to build okay. more council housing, which is very important. Um, get people out of emergency and temporary accommodation, which I was in, um, and onto. Uh, onto camp, into council housing, and then um, you've also got the the need for the private sector and the private rented sector to be regulated properly, so people can you know live in 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 homes that are fit for purpose essentially. Because there, we have got trans younger populations are more transient; they don't want to tie themselves down at the age of twenty and buying a home. I fully understand that myself. Right, okay, um, okay. So that's obviously needs regulation as well. But some people obviously only want six months tenancies, tenancies because that's how, how they might have a six month job, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. temporary job. So we've got this transient population. So we need to be able to cater, take, cater for everyone and this sort of gig economy that's coming. Well, yeah, I mean, that's uh, it's a minefield. Um, uh, it's a very difficult situation. It's uh, not anyone's got the perfect answer for it. 
Anyway, moving on to the election. Yeah. 12th of December, is that right? That's right. So how are you feeling about that and your competitors and and how do you think it's going? I mean, uh, there was a prediction that the Tories might win. Uh, you might win yourself. Um, Conservatives. Sorry, Conservatives <laughs> might win. Sorry, do excuse me. Um, what do you think of that? Are you, do you think that's just a... Um, do you think there's any, it's a real poll or a prediction or what do you think about it? How do you feel about it? Well, the, poll, the only poll that matters is the actual day. I think there's, exactly. I, so I mean, I'm not going to, I'm going to work hard to speak to as many residents as possible between now and the 12th of December, get my message out there, who I am, why I want to do this, why I want to stand up for people of Brighton, Camp Town and Peace Haven in mm. Parliament and be the strong voice that they deserve. Um, so it'll be up to them on the 12th of December whether they choose to elect me or someone else. Um, the other candidates are all noble people, I think. Okay. Um, you know, they've all got the best interests of the, res of the constituents at heart in their own way. They may have a different outlook as to how they deliver that or okay. not. Yeah. Me, that's entirely their prerogative to do so. Um, so yeah, no, I just I'm looking forward to it. I'm enjoying the campaign. It's hard work, and it will be hard work if I get elected. But I, I, no, I invite residents to hold their nose um, and vote for me this one time, and I won't let them down. Fantastic, Joe Miller. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. It's very rainy and very cold out there. It is. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Bye.